Hi, I'm Mitch Reed. Welcome to my vlog. And today I'm going to talk about how to practice quietly. <laughs> Not something that I, I like doing. I like to just, you know, but you do have moments and times where you want to practice, but there's people in the house or maybe you're staying in a hotel. Um, you know, maybe you get really inspired like three in the morning when you get up and you make you a pot of coffee and you can't sleep and you want to play your fiddle, but you don't want to wake anybody up. So this happens and it's totally normal. <laughs> and the thing about fiddling is that whenever you get that inspiration, you, you have to seize the moment. You have to take advantage of it and use that fuel to get better on the fiddle. Um, don't let it just go away because uh, those are the, the important magic moments that you need to, to keep on becoming a better fiddler. So, um, so of course, the first thing I would recommend is a mute. And there's a couple of different mutes. Um, there's one that I'm going to talk about that I don't have with me. I actually used to have one and I lost it. Um, and it's a metal mute. So it's actually looks like this. This is a, what we call a rubber mute. Let me see if I get the camera angle right. So you can see the thickness of it. And what this does is it fits on the fiddle like this. So you can see how it fits on there. Okay. Now, so they make one, imagine this thing being metal and the metal ones are the most quietest ones. So they really clamp on and they really absorb the vibration uh, on the bridge. And that's basically how it works is that the sound starts here on the bridge, of course, because the strings are here. So the strings are vibrating and the sound travels through the bridge. And then there's a sound post in here that's like an electric cable that brings all the sound to the back of the fiddle. And then once it vibrates the back of the fiddle, which the back of the fiddle is made out of hard maple, it just shoots it out. The top is made out of spruce and it vibrates as well. So it's, it's, it's more of a flexible wood and the back is, is more of a, um, basically like just a, um, a shield that kind of blasts it back out through the F-holes. So um, yeah, so this is the rubber mute, which this one I totally recommend. Um, and I can even show you. So if you want to practice um, a tune, it can be anything, you know. Kind of loud <laughs> that would wake somebody up for sure but it'd be good you know it'd be a good kind of way to wake up okay so i'm gonna put on the rubber mute and i'm gonna push it all the way down so the rubber mute what's interesting about it is depending on how far you push it down is how much sound you're taking away so by pushing it really hard going all the way down i'm gonna get the most quietest effect so here it is now <laughs> Sounds like a little mouse playing the fiddle. Um, so if, if that's too quiet, just kind of lift it up a little bit. That's what I use when I'm in a hotel room and I, I have to practice and it might be a little too early and I know people are sleeping. So I'll lift it up a little bit and get a little bit more sound, but I'll push it all the way down and that way I know I'm not bothering anybody. If I wake people up with that, then you know, I haven't even turned my TV set on yet. I know the TV would wake you up more than that would. So, okay, so here's just about halfway. All right, so the thing about mutes is you do lose tone. Um, some people that have a real tinny or shrill sounding violin will actually use a mute just to give it some warmth. So that does work. But if you have a really nice violin that you like the sound of, when you use a mute, you actually lose some of that tone. So you do sacrifice tone for the ability to practice while people are sleeping. Um, and that's just how it, how it goes. So uh, uh, if that's still too quiet or you just don't like the tone, you can lift it up even a little bit more. So this is the mute with it just barely kind of on there, just sitting on the top. <laughs> Sounds like 
through an old telephone, you know, but hey, it works. Um, okay, so the other kind of mute that's not as harsh, you don't have as much control, but it gives an interesting sound. It's just a regular orchestra mute. So you see these things are used in orchestra. Uh, the conductor wants you to play a certain, uh, the violins or the violas to play a certain part, even the cellos. Um, you put this in the middle. Let's see how it goes, if I remember correctly. So it goes like this on the fiddle. See how it fits on there. It actually looks like a little fiddle. <laughs> All right, so it goes on there. And let's see what it sounds like. I really like the tone of this. It actually gives it some uh, bass or some boost. Um, kind of takes away the ag aggravating highs. And so if you have a, um, I hate to use the word, but it's it's going to come out crappy fiddle. <laughs> if you have a crappy fiddle that you paid, you know, whatever, uh, this, you might try this. It might work. Um, and then what's cool about this is you can leave it on your fiddle. Look at that. Whoop. You leave it on, you just slide it back, and then it has no effect. But it's always on there in case somebody shows up. Oh, somebody's here. I don't want them to hear me. Hurry, put it on. <laughs> so you have that kind of thing. Okay, so I, the first mute I had ever even heard of was I went to this great fiddle player's house named Lynn Harrington. He was from Lafayette. Um, he used to play in a band called Phile and Kush Kush. He was a really neat guy. Uh, he moved from here. I don't know where he is now, but um, I used to go to his house and, and just visit with him and listen to him play. And he had a fiddle that he claimed was just a little too shrill for him. You know, he found it in, in this, he bought this old house and he found this fiddle in the attic. You know, classic story. And uh, the fiddle was, you know, probably played by more, by a, a violinist more than a fiddler. It had more of a shrill sound or like a cutting sound. And he was looking for the warmth that a lot of fiddle players look for out of a violin. Um, so he actually, he would use this, which is just a clothespin. And this can actually give some interesting tones. So what you do is you just put it on your bridge like that. So you see, whoa, sorry, I'm dyslexic. So I have a hard time seeing, feeling which way to go. So, okay, so you got that on there. And you can try either way. Like right now I have it pinched on the, the high string side. So it, it'll take more of the highs off. So you're gonna get a real bassy sound. So watch this, I'll put it now on the bass side and this should take some of the bass off, I think. Yeah, so here we go. All right, um, so again, that's just something that most people have around their house. Um, it's not, I don't think this is quiet enough to uh, play while somebody's sleeping. I think it would probably still kind of wake them up. But if somebody's in the other room watching TV and you just don't want them to hear yourself practicing because you're trying new stuff, you know, and I totally understand that. I, when I practice, I don't really like people to listen to me either because when I practice, um, that's when I'm going to work on stuff I'm not very good at. And, you know, things that I've done in the past that I remember kind of messing up on. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to maybe break it apart or try to figure out why is, why am I having a hard time with this? Um, and so I don't want people hearing, hearing me do that either. <laughs> so, um, so I totally understand, uh, you know, for those of you out there who were asking about this. Um, there's another trick, too, that I, I do um, sometimes when I'm traveling and um, I'll get inspired to play the fiddle and it's kind of late in a hotel room, but I don't have a mute with me, or I don't really want, I want to try some things that I don't want to hear a muted sound. I want to hear a fiddle, you know, but I don't want it to be loud. 
Um, now you have to have a pretty good fiddle to do this, but the other little trick is this, is just tuning your fiddle down. And um, I don't have a particular, you know, uh, pitch that I, I tune it to. I, you could say B flat maybe. So if you bring your D string all the way down to B flat, I would, I usually just do this. I actually, because the lower you go, the lower you can get the strings to go in pitch, but remain at a good quality, um, whether not muddy, too muddy, and, and that'll bring the volume down, then, then that works well. So I'll just give you a quick example of what I mean by that. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, but it does work. If you're new at the fiddle, this might throw you off because you might be more used to using a tuner and stuff. So um, I'll show you anyway. In case you ever hear a, a crazy sound of fiddle, it's me staying at a hotel and next door to you. So let's see. I actually like doing this. It, it can really give some, it just changes things up. It's like you're playing a different instrument. Like a viola or something. So like I said, I didn't really, I didn't uh, tune it to a certain pitch. I just brought it down. If I go any lower with the G string, it's not going to sound very good. So this is for this particular fiddle. This is about the lowest I can go. Okay, still kind of loud. This fiddle is kind of loud. So the other thing I'll say real quick too is loosening your bow. If you loosen it more than you would normally um, and then just play a little bit lighter, you might avoid playing double strings just so you can practice melodies and stuff without being heard by people or bothering people or whatever. Um, so now you can hear it. totally changes the sound, you know. Again, playing waltzes, playing soft, single strings, tune your fiddle down, um, might not bother anybody at all. These are the tricks that I use and uh, hope I've helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment or whatever, you know, email me. Um, but uh, like I said, these, this, this is what I use. Now some fiddlers just don't care and they just play until the manager calls the hotel and says, you know, one more time and you're gonna be sleeping in your van. <laughs> Believe me, I've been there. So, <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, stay inspired, keep on fiddling, no matter if there's somebody in the house that doesn't like your fiddling or thinks you need to practice more or whatever, don't listen to them. Just, just have fun, play when you're inspired to play, play every day and, um, and love every minute of it because that's what I do and that's what you should do. Okay, have a fantastic day. Thank you so much.